So let's review arrays. Okay, let's just read this part together. You can demonstrate multiplication by showing objects in an array. There are two ways to set up an array with two factors. Okay, what is demonstrate? It's the same as model, okay? For each array given, create a different array that shows the same factors, then write the multiplication sentence for each picture. So this array has how many rows? Four rows. Remember, our first factor tells how many rows. The X means rows of. Four rows of how many are in each row? And then a multiplication sentence needs an equal sign and the product. So four times six is? Okay, now I can do an array to show six times four. So how many rows would I need for six times four? Six. So go ahead and an array should be neatly in line, not all over the place, okay? How many are going to be in each row? Four. What? What? Four. Yeah. Four. Okay. So this is showing six rows of four. So this is four times six, or four rows of six. And this is six times four, or six rows of four. Again, you have to do this correctly to be a level two on the pretest. Okay, what is this one? How many rows? Three rows of how many in each row? Six. Equals? Eighteen. So then over here, if I want to model six times three, how many rows do I need? Okay, please stop. How many in each row? Three. Three. Okay, so this one is three times six, three rows of six, and this one is six times three. And that equal sign means they're equal, they're equivalent. Three times six and six times three are both equal to 18. Okay, but it is important how we model it. Okay, it, it's been the whole time that I've been talking. And you're not done writing what I have written. Or it's very, not very visible. Okay, so there are at least two arrays for any product. The product times one and one times the product. Sometimes there are other possible arrays for a product. Draw the other array for the product 25. So there you could do one times 25, so one row of 25, or you could do 25 rows of one. What's another way we could do it to get the product 25? Olive? That would be 24. We need 25. Gemma? Right, so the multiplication sentence is going to be 5 times 5 equals 25. And our array is going to be 5 rows. And there's going to be 5 in each row. Okay. Okay, what about for 9? We could do 1 row of 9. We could do nine rows of one, or what's the other way we could do it? Carter, what else could we do? To get the product of nine. One times nine, nine times one, or? What else could I multiply to get nine? Three times three. So I need three rows and I need three in each row. 
okay? All right, sometimes there are several different arrays that can be drawn for a product. Draw an array for the product 28, that is not 28 times one, one times 28, seven times four, or four times seven. So let's just do our, fact, our uh, factor rainbow. So the first one would be one times 28, Okay, that's an even number. So it's two times what? Two times what is 28? 14. 14. Okay, three times nothing. Four times... Five times nothing. Six times nothing. So these are your six factors, your three factor pairs, or your six factors for 28. One, two, four, seven, 14, and 28. So our multiplication sentence, we can't do one times 28 or 28 times one, and we can't do seven times four, so it needs to be two times 14, which equals 28. So I need two rows and 14 in each row. Okay? Okay, so you have to know that the first factor tells how many rows. The second factor tells how many are in each row? Okay. Okay. Put that to the side and let's look at our pink math journal 33 that we should already have out. So half of this page is already filled out, right? Yep. Okay. Those are the properties of addition. Now we're going to talk about the properties of multiplication. Okay. The properties of multiplication. So the commutative property of addition says that I can add numbers in any order. I'm waiting. I can add numbers in any order and I will get the same sum. The commutative property of, of multiplication says the same thing. I can multiply numbers in any order and get the same product. Give me an example. Landon. Well, that's not a good example because they're the same factor. Give me a different example. Okay, six times four is equal to four times six. They are both equal to 24. You can write that like this or you could write six times four equals 24 and four times six equals 24. Okay? Okay, the associative property of addition says it doesn't matter how we group our numbers, the product will be the same. The sum will be the same. The multiplication uh, is the same. You can group your factors in any way you want and your product won't change. So let's say that I have the multiplication problem. Five times four times two. Okay, if I put this in parentheses, that means I do that part first. So five times four is 20 and then times two would be 40. Well, I could also do it this way. And I could first do four times two, which is eight, and then multiply that times five, which is 40. And maybe I like that because maybe I don't wanna multiply a big number like 20. I just want a basic fact like eight times five. Does that make sense? So you can group them any way that you want to make sense. Okay, now this one is the one that's a little bit different. The identity property says that if we add zero to any add-end that does not change the add-end. Is that true for multiplication if I multiply by zero? No. What is it? What do I have? To, one. 
So the identity property says that multiplying by one doesn't change the value of your first product, factor, factor. So it's seven times one is seven. 5,283 times one is 5,283. Okay, so the distributive property is what we just did in our problem solving. If you're watching this video and you didn't see this, this is a lot. But this is the distributive property which says we can break apart numbers to make multiplying easier. Okay, but there's kind of a better way to word it. Let's say that um, multiply... So multiplying the sum of a factor by another factor is the same as multiplying the two factors. So what that's saying is I can do 24 times 8 and that's the same as if I do 20 times 8 plus 4 times 8 because 20 and 4 add up to 24. So I can take the eight times part of the factor. I can break my factor apart to make it easier to multiply. Because let's be honest, 20 times eight is pretty easy to multiply, isn't it? What's 20 times eight? 160. Four times eight is pretty easy to multiply, isn't it? What's four times eight? 32. What's 160 plus 32? 192. But if I just said do 24 times 8, that's harder to do in your head. But breaking it apart makes it pretty easy, right? When we break it apart by place value. Okay, I'm going to show you a video and we're going to practice this one together.